So my second Ojibwe book was called Buju Ojidamu, and it was basically just everyone saying hello to a squirrel. It'd be like, Buju, Megazi. Ah, Buju Ojidamu. Buju Wabak Shigijiwag. Buju Ojidamu. And I went to friends there, but by the end, he was kind of sick. Beijing Mayingan. One wolf. It's hard to know where to begin with Michael Lyons, an Ojibwe artist from the Leech Lake area. This week, we will attempt to track this interesting guy through the many stories of his life. Now that I'm grown up, I don't mind telling the story. It was kind of embarrassing for many years um, to talk about, uh, yeah, it was my dream was to become a cartoonist. And in fact, my dream, what I would have kind of thought of it as as a kid, was a rock star cartoonist. You people are number one! So somehow a blending of being both a rock star and a cartoonist, and I, I don't even think such a job really exists. <laughs> but um, so when I when I was a little kid, I saw a cartoonist on the Mister Rogers show, and he was being interviewed, and he did a comic strip in the newspaper, and I forget his name, but I think the strip was uh, High and Lois, and uh, I remember it being that strip because I started a strip, and my main character looked just like one of the guys in that. Michael was born in 1968. Gary Trudeau, Doonesbury. Gary Larson, The Far Side, were his idols. And uh, their story just sounded like, well, in college we met an editor and said, showed him three or four strips, and then next thing you know, you know they're millionaires. And so I went, well, oh, it's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I went to college, started the strip uh, in the college newspaper, thinking, well, I'll just do this for a while, and then I can drop out of college and comic strip artist. Right. Just that easy. Like 10 years ago, I was working at Tribal College, and I worked with a guy named Benny Tones. He was the Ojibwe language and dance and drum instructor. And we were office mates, and he was um, not trying to teach me. He was definitely trying to teach me how to sing and drum, but he just used Ojibwe a lot because it was his first language. And I knew some phrases growing up from my grandpa and stuff, but Benny was really the one who taught me a lot about the language. And so I decided to do a, a children's book called Dog and Maingan, which was just counting to ten and some animal names. He studied graphic arts in college and has had a number of real jobs to support his cartooning habit. Over the years, he's produced quite a body of work. Seven books, two plays, a coloring book series using the Ojibwe language. Some are edgy and some are sweet. A bit like Michael. And his extensive cast of characters cracked me up. And I did a comics book called um, Queer as Superheroes. Ratman and Robert finds out he's cheating on him with flame on. And it's very pro-gay, I'm not. Then I wrote a play, Omics Blood, which later became neither elf nor vampire. An allegory for boarding schools. About a young girl who's mixed-blooded. Half vampire and half elf. <laughs> Story is as old as time. <laughs> and, uh, she gets sent to a boarding school to learn how to be a proper vampire. Because she doesn't drink blood, she can't change into a bat. There's a lot of stuff she can't do because you're only half vampire. She meets uh, a, an alien named Steven. He's half alien, half human. It's Santa Claus, and he's very scary. Mm -hmm. Elves are running in fear and he's flying around. But people thought it was, I was attacking Christianity. And, uh, and it wasn't just white people, Indian people. Like, mm -hmm. You shouldn't make fun of Santa. Then just did, I did a few more over the years. Looks like Batman only has a white outfit, mm -hmm. red nose, a tail. In this book, the vampires are the dominant culture. Vampires and evil Santas. Ratman and Robert. His illustrations are whimsical, amazing, and so varied. Although he dreams of being a rich cartoonist, Michael, like a lot of us, is also a realist. And as an artist, that is something that I hate to admit, but I struggle with because you think, well, money will finally le legitimize my work. Like the, the college strip, I remember when I, when I started it, I thought, well, if I could get into one paper and get paid for it, that'll be good enough. I don't need to get rich, I don't need to be famous, but it'll give me a reason to do it. And sure enough, I got paid not bad for a four panel strip. Um, it was like $75 a week at the time. But after a month, it was enough to pay my rent. And so there's always been, Part of my mind has been just sort of hustling for opportunities to somehow get paid to draw. You know, because I'm getting older. This year, I've, I really had to start getting serious about, okay, not how serious are you, but how do you really want to live? Because I've been working jobs I didn't want to be at, 
my whole life, mm -hmm. always watching the clock, wishing I could draw. Even when I had good jobs by other people's standards, I would have this wonderful opportunity to do something that someone else would jump at, and I'd be thinking, I wish I was a cartoonist. You've been listening to The Call of the Wild. This week, I'm talking to Michael Lyons, a cartoonist from Bemidji. So this year has been my most profitable year because of Facebook and Twitter and Amazon and uh, online publishing. New publishing avenues and social media marketing have increased Michael's presence and readership. Well, gibberish, it's only been out for a month. So uh, I sold more last month than I have all year. His strip called O Gibberish, What Else? He publishes daily on Facebook. Yeah, and actually, I, my, my brother said it the first time I ever heard it. it was years ago. I was taking an Ojibwe language class. But we, went, we were taking Ojibwe together. And, you know, it's so hard to learn, and I'm so lazy. And I remember my brother saying, well, get in the car. It's time to go learn our Ojibberish. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike went on, and I now, I mean, it's 15, 20 years later. And he's this fluent speaker. He's, me, I just butcher it. <laughs> like, how did you? You were terrible in the class, but you stuck with it. Michael works with kids and also volunteers with the Suicide Prevention Hotline. This spring, he's going to be an artist in residence at the Red Lake Schools, helping kids make their own Ojibwe language coloring books and producing a play. It's been really fun going into classrooms. Kids are super um, responsive to learning the language, and if you can draw, to a second grader, it's like having a superpower. They're just like, oh, how do you do that? You know, and he says his work is somewhere between Sesame Street and Labyrinth. Seems like the perfect place to put Michael Lyons. He rolls whatever life is giving him into his work, but he does it with his own unique twist. Uh, my next comic book is going to be a, a suicide prevention comic book, which uses uh, Stephen the alien, some of my main characters. And it's all about how to be a, a, somebody to help if you think somebody might be suicidal. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the warning signs? How can you best help? And it's, it's already written. I just have to illustrate it. But it's, uh, it's going to be cool. Stephen comes in on a spaceship and scans the planet because there's a lot of suicide ideation. And you find out Chagog, the little skunk, is depressed. This is Milt Lee with The Call of the Wild.